What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG. You know, other than getting a date with that Nelly chick from Little House on the Prairie, there's really only one other thing that I haven't done in my life, and that's injected an entire Lance Armstrong worth of illicit chemicals into my heart with a syringe like a baby's forearm and then ridden across half a dozen uniquely boring locations. But lo and behold, someone has simulated it, and it's called Pro Cycling Manager 2016 by the fine folks at Cyanide Studios. But I think the real question is, does Pro Cycling Manager 2016 encircle gamers with that delicious feeling of being in a slipstream on the brake, or is it stuck in the middle, a digital version? of the Peloton, just working with everyone else, content to stay safe and secure in the pack. So you know what? I had a few hours to burn, so I jumped right into it. Let's see if it answers those questions. As always, feel free to subscribe if you like the video. So here's the review for Pro Cycling Manager 2016. The only time we're wearing spandex and sweating profusely isn't a date combo breaker, WWE namesakes like the Cannibal, the Badger, and Big Mig, and the only place where the athlete could probably power your entire home in one hill climb graphics are up first. I think serviceable is the name of the game here. You know, it's a title where much of the real work is done mired deep down in between two numbers, one highlighted white, the other highlighted green, and making you feel excited that the green one has now moved up a single digit. The UI isn't that straightforward, but then neither is professional biking with everything from training, racing, team events, sponsors, objectives, stats, rankings, detailed tracking, and so forth being packed into just a couple screens. It's not the worst UI, but at times it can be a bit messy, especially if you're trying to jump from one thing to the next, but it's in some kind of embedded menu two layers down. Now, graphics Graphically, when you start racing, the game looks pretty good, throwing tons of riders into the mix at any one time if you're back in the pack or watching the world zip by if you're leading a breakaway. It's all fairly low polygon, and even with the ability to adjust various filters, for the most part, it's not going to impress anybody. Also, I can't say I was excited for the location's visual presentation either. Now, I don't know if maybe in foreign lands, bushes sprout into being like Mother Nature's crop dust in the earth 10 bike lengths in front of you. That and the fact that I was seeing frame rate loss on a GTX 1080 and seeing this happen feels a little bit like someone buying a wood block for their brand new Lamborghini, shoving it under the gas pedal, and then everyone congratulating themselves for effectively neutering a sports car. At least for the most part, the models and the texturing look okay. You know, in the end, the game is probably 30% graphical presentation, 70% mired deep into human accounting firms, especially because you can simulate all the races anyway, and that's fine. For what it does and sets out to do, it looks okay, but it's not going to stun you even from the entirely too far zoomed out helicopter view. It's an okay looking game, but it's not great shakes. Sound, music, and voice. That's more than two minutes separating them. Look, the pack has taken its foot off the gas. The team leaders can't be too worried about the breakaway. And you know what? Let's switch it up a little bit. Let's do sound first. It's pretty damn poor. Even with the music and everything else shut off, everything's just mixed really low. And though the occasional wind whipping past your face and the thrum of multi-hundred dollar bicycle tires eating up entire continents worth of distance is really cool, it's also exceedingly rare. If you're in mid-pack, you should really hear the haggard breath of people whose hearts live where heart attack victims end up dying. Instead, it's a fairly quiet affair with almost no wind sound, barely little rubber on the road sound, and anyone watching the sport hears more background noise from the damn TV speakers than from the game. I feel that when it comes to sound, this is actually a vastly missed opportunity. And hey, look, speaking of missed opportunities, let's move to music. It's pretty terrible. It's a couple tracks of notoriously footholder style music that seems like it has more of a place in someone's Fred Meyer elevator than it does here. Listen, I ain't saying Disturb needs to show up and pump out 10,000 fists in the air, but music is emotional resonance in the audio spectrum. Ignore it, and you're ignoring a good deal of what drives passion. Winning a race here doesn't met out Chariots of Fire. Hell, it doesn't even met out Quest for Fire. Instead, it's a bit like being chased through an entire level by, well, an elevator voice. You know, it's voice where I feel that games like this always seem to miss the opportunity. And once again, we have fairly truncated voices. Sometimes someone's announced as the winner or someone yells one of the leaders fallen, but not a single person has actually done so. Now, it's not as bad as Joe Rogan's accuracy. It's over when two UFC fighters are literally still standing five feet from one another. But at times you do wonder what race they're actually watching. Barely passable. And it doesn't do much for a sport that could have a really high degree of information passed down to neophytes that had they chosen to do so. And I really, really would have liked that. Gameplay. Let's get this straight out. I'd be lying if I didn't admit that my hopes were to dope the shit out of my racers with some EPO and basically have the blood oxygen level of O2 canisters with legs. But it's not that kind of game. It's one part deep RPG, one part shallow action racer. So you can play solo, one person races, day races, do a career as a starter or someone who's established or jump into multiplayer, which most of the time didn't work. Now, if you pick just the race event, you basically start and have various actions you can take during the race and an effort bar to indicate how much you want to put onto the go-go juice that you rub into your bicycle 
bicycle to do any one thing. Various energy bars track things like freshness and tiredness, which burn away as you rip down nondescript roads. You can do things like attack, which is basically putting your all into a move to break away from the main body or even the breakaway group and stretch out the difference between the winners and the losers. Now, this is one area where I really enjoyed it because these are real-time stats and watching them and knowing when to attack are the name of the game here. Attacking too soon can burn out, leaving you nothing for the last sprint, or even worse yet, nothing for the right ahead, while conserving energy can leave you hopscotching from group to group in the hopes of catching up to the breakaway, but not having enough time to do so. In fact, much of Pro Cycling Manager is about knowing others as well as knowing yourself. Are these guys you're with sort of shit on hills? How are they on the downhill? Can you beat them with higher acceleration? When straight off in the races, you know less of that, but if you jump into the career mode, it's a whole other ballgame. Because I ain't gonna lie, this shit is next level crazy detailed, and if you don't know anything about bike racing, the great thing about the game is, is it helps you along with a tutorial. I'm just kidding, it doesn't. It, it's really one of the most basic tutorials for a game and a design that needs it so, so well. It really doesn't explain much for new people at all. Stats for a single rider alone run to over a dozen, and that's not even when you're taking into account the main attributes of a rider like fitness, tiredness, rhythm, and freshness, which sounds like a checklist for a one-night stand, but it's actually not. For example, who cares if you have good attributes on acceleration if your freshness is already bad at the start of the race because your last race you pushed that character time and time again to lead the pack? Does that mean it's bad? Hell no. In fact, once you start diving into that part of the game, I challenge anyone who gets it or who has it already to not find some of those idiosyncrasies of an RPG game that we all really know and loved. Unfortunately, with the lackluster tutorial and help sections, I really do feel the game was held back an incredible amount, especially for newer people wanting to jump into these things. Now, some of the things you can do in careers are release and renew new contracts, budgeting, balancing scout information with your gut feeling, sending doctors, or just saying fuck it and sending bikes out alone on long races with nothing to support them but a bike that costs more than many of our cars probably do. Hell, you can even groom younger riders for the sport ahead. There is nothing particularly comforting about sending grown men to watch little kids play sports. Listen, by the time you're done and you understand what's going on, you're going to think some of these dudes are a bunch of prima donnas with their favored weathered and disliked temperatures and them turning up their nose when you send them to a training camp at a five-star hotel that happens to not serve that one favorite dish of theirs. But that's the thing. They aren't. These are people who are probably just a couple steps from 100% at all times. Let's see how your Subaru runs if you put it in first gear and drive for four hours at redline RPMs. So a bit of leeway and flexibility is probably needed for some of these characters. Now, you add in the fact that some riders have very particular specialties, like the easy-to-guess-what-they-do sprinter and climber, or the domestique, which is an incredibly important position of a person who gets the other riders food, drink, and helps them repair their bikes and keeps them going, but usually desires no actual wins themselves. You see, it's a team sport, and here self-sacrifice isn't the means to an end of not ever having your name being remembered. Well, maybe it is just a little bit. But these are also changing roles at times as well, so you may end up being a climber one time, sort of a sprinter the next. It just all sort of depends on what type of race you're in. Lastly, the game isn't 100% official, but with Steam mod support, that's pretty much already being worked on. But unfortunately, here is where this game busts a flat tire. The game is riddled with bugs. For example, many folks still can't play because some genius thought, hey, let's run authentication through an outside server, which then promptly stopped working, or the fact that a significant part of the game's multiplayer worked for a bit, then died, and hasn't worked since. But it's the absolutely insidious number of crashes that astounds me. 37. That's both the number of my jersey and the number of crashes I had in the title. Fate? Kismet? Just random luck? I think not. Also, kidding aside, it actually crashed 39 times. It crashes when it loads, when it doesn't load in the main screen, when loading the main screen, when loading multiplayer, when loading single player, when starting single player, and yes, even when leaving single player. In fact, it's called PCM 2016, which may stand for Pro Crashing Machine. It gave APB on the Xbox One a run for its money for being the most brutally unstable title that I have played in years. Fun factor. Listen, if you can crack this nut, hey, you've got hours and hours of gameplay. And when it runs, the interface is nice, though during Battles for Uphill Supremacy, as everyone's jockeying for position, it can get a bit hectic, clicking on one biker, setting them to attack that position, then wanting to do something on the sidebar. It feels a bit disjointed, but it's workable even with a full team. The crunchy numbers part is fantastically engrossing if you're into that kind of thing, with all manner of statistics to manage, raise, lower, watch, raise, watch, lower, or keep track of. While you're doing all these things, there is some oddities, especially when, let's say, you're doing something like a contract. You get 1600 bucks for placing sometimes in the smaller events. Basically, this means you get someone's weekly wages for almost killing yourself on national television, but then some chump runs along and decides that they want to pay you $300,000 for wearing their fucking shirt while you're doing it. Sounds crazy, and yeah, it is pretty insane throughout the entire title. But it's not easy to describe the awesomeness of actually winning one of these races because I'm telling you, even if you're in the single event, so much work is put into this that when you actually win, there's a tangible feeling of satisfaction. 
So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch. And of course, the rent on a PC is changed to deep, deep sale. And this is actually that. It's a deep, deep sale. Guys, multiplayer just doesn't work. And you know, what's there is actually fun. And this is coming from someone who thinks that watching professional biking is about as fun as watching somebody professionally walking. But no, it's actually awesome to consistently meter yourself, work hard at taking the lead, and then smunch down an energy bar and go to work in the last sprint section. And then, of course, watch it all crumble as the group catches back up to you. But come on. The problems here, they burn off players' goodwill like the sport burns off calories. There's just no way this game was ever ready for release. Now, the reason why it's not a never touch is because there is an actual playable game under there. Once they fix it up, patch it, hey, you know what? It'll probably be a different story. So as always, I hope you guys like the reviews. If you do, give it a thumbs up. I would love if you guys checked out Patreon. It always helps. Use the affiliate link. That helps. Check us out on Twitter. That helps as well. If you dislike the video, as always, give it a thumbs down and peace out.